All right. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Pursuing Jesus. My name is Shane Winnings, and I'm so excited to be doing this right now. Um, you know, the Lord has put a lot of different things on my heart in the past year, and um, it's honestly been hard to kind of navigate what to do first and what the timeline is going to look like, what the resources are going to look like. I even remember when he spoke to me about doing the nationwide tour that I did last summer. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you have my yes, but I have no idea what this is going to look like, how we're going to fund it. And he just said, leave everything to me. And as many of you know, we raised almost $50,000 to make the tour happen as well as uh, fund my wife and I because little did we know shortly after him speaking that to us, you know, as a police officer at the time, he would call me out of that profession and into full-time ministry via being an unpaid missionary. And so for those of you joining who have never heard anything I've done, don't know who I am, um, I was a military officer in the Army with the 1st Special Forces Group. I lived in Washington for nine years. After my time in the military and serving in Afghanistan, I transitioned into law enforcement, and I did that for five years. And in May of 2021, the Lord spoke to me, told me to quit my job and move my pregnant wife across the country to become an unpaid missionary. And we said yes, and 19 days after he spoke that word, I had quit my job, we had sold our house, and we were in Texas. So that's where we're at now. I'm a missionary with One Voice Student Missions and the Jesus Clubs. You might have seen us on social media. We preach um, through TikTok and Instagram and things like that, as well as our main focus, which is in-person ministry, specifically in high schools. But over the last year, we've uh, amassed a million followers on TikTok by preaching the gospel. It's been absolutely incredible. And that has really given us a voice. You know, TikTok is like a giant megaphone to the next generation to rally them for events and all kinds of things like that. We're seeing incredible testimonies, healing, salvation, people saying no to suicide. It's been amazing, and I am so thankful to be here and giving my life for this work. And so one of the things that God spoke in the midst of all that was to write a book and to do a podcast. So the first book I have out, I'll talk about that later, and now it's the podcast. And you know, I wondered for a while, how would this happen? I've never done a podcast. I don't know what programs to use. I don't have the equipment. And I had so many questions and it seemed like such a daunting thing almost, you know, and I see a lot of my friends doing podcasts and they're reaching people for Jesus. And that desire just kept growing in me. And yesterday he put it back on my heart. We did a quick fundraiser. And I say quick because you guys, my followers, are absolutely incredible you know as I said Jessica and I moved here in faith I am an unpaid missionary we do not receive a paycheck from a job I don't go work uh, a nine-to-five and get paid an hourly wage or a salary our pay is completely up to you you the donor you the listener and you guys support my family you pay our rent you put food on our table you paid for all of the things necessary for us to um, bring our son into the world, who is now six weeks old. His name's Elijah. And so from the bottom of my heart and my wife's heart, we say thank you, because none of this could have happened without you guys. And in that same light, we did a fundraiser for this equipment because, you know, I, don't, I can't go work overtime. I don't have extra cash laying around to buy this stuff. But... The demand was there. So many comments, so many DMs, emails, people saying, can you just start a podcast? It would be so easy for me to just listen to you while I'm at work or while I'm driving or while I'm at the gym. And there really wasn't a place for me besides YouTube to kind of upload content like this. You know, TikTok and Instagram are short videos or reels. 
YouTube, I pretty much post the same. I'll post full-length sermons on there, but podcast is very unique, and I felt like the Lord said it was time. You guys funded all of our equipment within six hours. I am just blown away by that, and so I want to say thank you. Um, you guys also showed me that you want this to happen too, and that's why you invested in us, and so I just say thanks. Thanks for making this happen. So what is the goal of this? You know, I, I titled this podcast Pursuing Jesus, and I would really say that it's designed to lead you into the secret place. Most Christians that I have met throughout my life lack intimacy with God. And intimacy with Him is actually the goal. You know, the Bible says that the goal of our instruction is love, and God is love. And because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have the ability to become love, not just receive love, not just show love, not just experience love, but actually become it. And Jesus said in John 17, 3, that eternal life is not heaven. Eternal life is not something that happens when you die. He said eternal life is knowing God and his son, Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. That's amazing. And I don't think we focus on that enough. And that is what this podcast is for. I want to see you come alive in the secret place when no one else is looking when no one else is there, for no other motive than to just know Jesus because that's what he paid for. You know, the Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. What was lost? What are they talking about here? In the Garden of Eden, man and God fellowshiped. They communed. They were together always. There was unity. There was oneness because we were made in his image. We were made by God and for God. But when sin entered the picture, man was banished from the garden. Relationship, access, communion with God was cut off. And as a result of that, our identity took a major hit. And that's why I love saying that humans are born with a God-sized hole in their heart. Because from the day we're born... We are searching for God, whether we know it or not, whether you're listening and you're, you're an atheist or you're a different religion, that's totally fine. But I believe that everyone is searching for God. Now, the world will say everyone is searching for love, and I believe that's true. But the Bible says that God is love, and that's why the things of this world will never fully satisfy, because you weren't made for this world. You were made by God for God, and only He can fulfill that place. And most Christians that I've met in my life, and it makes me sad, they have a problem receiving love from God. And it really comes from a place of insecurity. It comes from a place of brokenness, of saying, I'm not worthy to receive love. Or how could God love someone like me? Look at the things that I've done. You know, how could God this? And we have so many questions. But the truth is that the love of God trumps all of our thoughts, all of our questions. And the love of God is true. The Bible is true, and it trumps our experience. And so we can fellowship with the living God all the time. And that's pretty amazing. And it sounds way better than just praying a prayer to go to heaven. Like, did you know that you can know God? God wants to know you. That's what Jesus paid for. He paid the price for you to have access to God. Think about that. We talk about Jesus' death on the cross and the forgiveness of sins, but why? He didn't die to forgive your sins so that you could go to heaven and not go to hell. Now that stuff happens, and that's amazing, but if that is all we get out of this, then we are going to live our life without a revelation of who our Father is or why Jesus actually came. You see, the whole point of sin was to cut us off from God. This is what the devil wanted to do. And so when sin entered, that division happened. Jesus came, and he was the bridge between man and God. The Bible says he's the mediator. He's our intercessor. 
He prays to God continually on our behalf, and his blood that was shed on the cross has been sprinkled on the mercy seat as an offering. He was the perfect lamb that was slain even before the foundation of the world. It was always part of God's plan to send his son to redeem the sin of humanity so that we could know him. That's the purpose, and that is what we are going to pursue through this podcast. We'll break down different scenarios. We'll break down different scriptures. We'll go through questions that you guys send in. We'll have guest speakers on. We'll talk about hard topics, but it will all be unto pursuing Jesus and intimacy with him. You know, it's interesting. You can go to coffee with a friend for hours and say you're struggling beforehand. I'm willing to bet that most of you, after that time of fellowship and sitting down, being heard, receiving counsel and guidance, you probably leave that coffee shop feeling encouraged. Maybe you have a little bit of hope. But so many people that I know, when they pray, they come out more discouraged. And I believe that's because we aren't praying properly. And part of that comes from having an incorrect view of God and an incorrect view of how God sees us. If a friend can encourage me, couldn't God? I would wonder for many of these people who go into prayer and come out discouraged if you were actually talking to God. I'm willing to bet for the most part that you come out more aware of your problems and your trials and you don't have any answers and discouragement begins to set in. And that just shows that we don't know him like we could because there's a place to walk into the secret place, the quiet place with God, to get yourself in a room or in a closet when no one else is looking and to pray the truth of God's word over yourself. And it's impossible to not be encouraged by that. I have gone through some seriously hard things in my life, and we will go through some of those through this podcast and through later episodes. But the one thing that has been consistent through all the trials that I've walked through is how I responded. I thank God every day that as a new believer about six years ago, he showed me how to pray and it has carried me. It has given me a level of faith that I never could have attained on my own. And over time, that faith has grown and grown and grown. And now I have faith that I never thought possible, but it didn't happen overnight. It happened by believing in God's word above my experience because I know that life can be very, very hard. I've dealt with separation in my family. I've, I've dealt with relationships ending. I've dealt with addiction. I've dealt with massive, massive loss in my life. I dealt with suicidal thoughts. I've walked through a lot of things, and the Lord has completely healed me of all of them. And there's something powerful about facing a trial going into the prayer closet and saying, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that you hear me right now. You hear me when I pray. And I thank you, God, that you are never going to leave me. You're never going to forsake me. God, that you're here right now. I thank you, Lord, that you are for me. Who could be against me? You go before me, Lord. You see what is happening in my life. You know what's coming next. And I believe that I will always overcome because you said in this world, you will have troubles, you will have trials, but take heart. I have overcome the world and you live inside of me. And so, Father, I thank you right now that the one who overcame the world lives within me and I too will overcome because you and I are one. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that I will not be dictated by what I'm going through, but I'll be dictated by what you went through. I thank you that the truth of your word is what's going to lead my life, not what I'm facing right now. And Lord, I know it looks bad, but you are working all things together for my good, and I trust in you. 
you know, that's just one way that you can pray. And even now praying that I feel encouraged because I'm so aware of God with me. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. And we say it a lot and sometimes we sing it in worship, but is it real to you? Because when Emmanuel, God with you, becomes real, when you actually get a revelation of what that means, you will be able to walk through any fire knowing that you will not get burned. Think of the three men in the Old Testament. God didn't put the fire out. He wasn't intimidated by the fire. He joined those men in the fire, and they came out. They didn't even smell like smoke. The ropes that had bound them previously had been burned away, and everyone testified to the glory of God. God wants to use your life in the same way. And so I know this was a little bit of a side story, but I wanted you to understand where my heart is coming from. And it's about walking through life looking like Jesus. You know, we face some of the same trials that those who don't even know him face. But a lot of times in the church, we respond the exact same way. But we want to tell people about Jesus and how he's changed our life, but we look just like them. And I don't say that to be mean or to spank anybody. I say that to say, I think we've missed it. And there's an invitation to partner with heaven and say what God is saying and do what God is doing. There's a way to walk through trials where you don't look like the rest of the world. And 1 Peter 3 talks about giving an account, giving a defense for the hope that's within you. I believe that through this podcast, you are going to learn what it means to have a hope inside of you. And we're not going to try to muster up faith. We're simply going to dive into God's word and learn about who Jesus is in us what that means for us to really be Christians. And the fruit of that is going to be hope. And people are going to notice in your life when you have hope when it doesn't make sense. And they're going to ask about it. And I want to equip you as well to give a defense for that hope. So thanks for joining me. I think it's going to be amazing. Of course, we're going to go after miracles. I'm going to pray every time for those listening. And any testimonies that come from this Uh, please send them in and we will share them and it's just going to be amazing. God's going to get all the glory and we're just going to see what happens. So that's the first episode. Um, I'm excited to see what happens here. My plan is to push out an episode once a week minimum, um, sometimes more. It really just depends on getting into the groove of recording and editing and all of that and seeing what it looks like. So We'll see, but I'm excited to do it, and I've got a lot on my heart, and this is a great place to get that out. Of course, I want to promote my book that just came out within the last few weeks. It's called I Will Always Overcome, and it's a 63-day devotional based on Carolyn, Dr. Carolyn Leaf's study. She's a world-renowned mind expert and Christian neuroscientist, and long story short, the Bible says to renew your mind. And she has proven through science, through brain science, that we can actually do this. We can reprogram our minds, and it takes 63 days to do it. And so I wrote a devotional that is 63 days that is designed, scientifically proven, to increase your faith. And so you can check it out at the link in the description or in my bio on social media or on Amazon. It's only $10. Again, it's called I Will Always Overcome. Also, I have to give a shout out to Faith International University. What an incredible college. If you are interested in Bible school or even finishing a degree or starting a degree, maybe in business or art or in the ministry, Faith International University or faithiu.edu. Again, links will be available in description and bio. It's an incredible opportunity to go to school at your own pace. Um, It's big boy, big girl rules. You get assigned work. It's due at the end of the week. You can do everything online, and it is accredited. So I highly recommend checking that out. In my mission group, out of 30 people, I believe there's 26 of us that are 
um, involved in that school and that are taking classes and working towards a degree. Very um, competitive pricing. And if you're a missionary, um, they have some absolutely amazing financial support. So check them out, Faith International University. On September 3rd, my mission group, One Voice Student Missions and the Jesus Clubs and Gen Z for Jesus, we have a lot of different sects within the um, group, uh, a lot of different factions, you could say. We are partnering with Upper Room and Lou Engel, and we are holding an event for 15,000 youth and parents. It's the 60 year anniversary of when the courts took God out of schools and we are rallying to believe that Gen Z will be saved, that Gen Z will know God and that God will be put back in schools. And so on September 3rd in Frisco, Texas at the Dr. Pepper Field, we are meeting and we are going to fill that stadium up for God. It's absolutely free. You can find all the details on Instagram at Gen Z for Jesus or at the description or link in my bio. And all of those socials that I've mentioned, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you can just search for my name, Shane Winnings, on Instagram and TikTok. It's Shane.Winnings. It will be my face with a yellow background. Anything else is a fake account. I don't understand why people make fake accounts, but they do. Don't follow those if they have less than... Uh, 60,000 followers, that is not me. So again, thank you for joining. I'm excited to see where this goes. I'd like to pray, and we will call it a day. So Father, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for the ability to share the word over this platform. Lord, I pray for every person listening that an intimacy with you would begin to develop. And for those who already have relationship with you, I pray, God, that you would dig their wells even deeper. Lord, I thank you that we are going to run after you with all of our hearts. And I thank you, God, that your word says, whoever seeks you with all of our heart will find you. And so we commit to seeking you, Lord. I pray for anyone with a sickness or illness that they would be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Every bit of pain, Every limitation get out in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.